I hope you're having a great day. Since the beginning of 2019, we've been stressing more than normal on the importance of sleep and how sleep is the most important ingredient when it comes to our health. We can have great nutrition, we can have activity, we can be looking at our stress levels, but all of it is incomplete if we don't have the right amount of sleep at night. When we have the right amount of sleep at night, our food choices the next day are better. When we have the right amount of quality sleep at night, our cravings and our dependency on caffeine and sugar are lesser the next day. When we have the right amount of sleep, we allow our body's immune system to rejuvenate and perform, to help us identify cells and viruses and pathogens and germs in our body. Basically, we rejuvenate and recharge every cell in the human body to do its functions the right way. Now, a lot of us over, over the last couple of years have used alarm clocks to wake us up every single day. And you have different ringtones on your phones and you know on your electronic gadgets that help you wake up. Now, what we need to understand is uh, human species are probably the only species that allow our sleep to be artificially interrupted when we wake up. Now, blessed are those people who can wake up normally in the morning without the assistance of an alarm clock. And yes, if you need an alarm clock, okay, we want to make sure that the alarm ringing is not something violent that can jerk you out of your sleep. Now, I have immense respect for this one gentleman, his name is Matthew Walker, who's a PhD and has done extensive research involving sleep, sleep cycles, the circadian rhythm of the human body, immunity, and every possible research around sleep and the impact on human health and immunity. Now, what happens? Let's understand what happens. You're fast asleep, you're in the sympathetic, you're in the parasympathetic nervous system. Let's go over, we have sympathetic nervous system and we have parasympathetic. Sympathetic is stress mode, it's fight and flight response. That's when we're awake, we're facing something that's caused our stress levels to rise and we have all the energy, our blood pressure is high, our heart rate is faster, uh, our adrenaline is higher, so we have all the energy to fight or to flee. Okay, now in the sympathetic nervous system, which is called the rest and digest, the sympathetic nervous system is the nervous system where we digest our food better. We assimilate and absorb our food better and we're able to rest and fall asleep and stay into a deep cycle of sleep. Now imagine you're in the parasympathetic nervous system and all of a sudden you have a, lo a loud alarm that jerks you out of your sleep. Now what's the first thing that happens in your body? Your blood pressure spikes up rapidly rapidly, more rapidly than if you're sitting awake in the day, you're in your nervous system and you hear a piece of bad news or something happens in front of you, your blood, your blood pressure will spike up but not as rapidly as something that's gonna move you out of your sympathetic nervous system straight into your parasympathetic, straight into your sympathetic. So the moment that loud alarm rings, your blood pressure spikes rapidly and erratically. Imagine what's happening to your heart. Your heart gets this rude shock from a state of deep rest to a state of sudden awakening. Now what also happens is you, you rapidly move out of the sympathetic nervous system into uh, the parasympathetic nervous system, sorry, into the sympathetic nervous system in a split second. Now you can imagine all the reactions that happen in your body in that one split second because you were awoken rudely by this alarm clock. Now what happens is, People who, have, who already have heart problems, people who have already gone through strokes, people who have weak nervous systems, people who are sensitive to sound, people who have epilepsy and seizures and all of these things, this could be the worst thing for, them, for their health. Now the argument, the argument of most humans would be, I've been doing it for years and nothing's wrong with me. Well, you see, this is a choice, whether you decide to change and evolve or you decide to continue doing something, maybe nothing will happen to most people who wake up with alarm clocks. But the whole idea are these little lifestyle changes and understanding what's really happening deep down in our system that can be causing a problem. What also changes is imagine from parasympathetic to sympathetic, your cortisol boosts up in a second. Along with that, your adrenaline boosts up in a second, which means if your adrenaline boosts up in a second, your blood sugar levels also change and fluctuate. So the whole idea is, why are, why are humans the only species that need to be artificially interrupted to wake up? You look around in nature, every other species wakes up naturally when darkness turns to light. It's called dawn. 
that dim light basically starts shutting off melatonin and we automatically start rising. Maybe slow for some people over 15 to 20 minutes, some people will wake up immediately. But that's according to our normal biological clock, our circadian rhythm. Now when we rudely awaken ourselves, we break the circadian rhythm, we upset our biological clock and believe me, even this will impact what you eat within the four, first four to five to six or eight hours in your day. So now what are the solutions? Many of us have to do it. The best way to correct a problem is like I said, align your biological clock. Try to sleep as far as possible at the same time every night and wake up at the same time every day. The second thing you can do is the power of your subconscious mind or something called auto-suggestion. Try this tonight. Before you sleep, you do your deep breathing, you meditate, and you tell your subconscious mind what time you wanna wake up in the morning. You keep affirming to your, your subconscious to wake you up at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. Do this for a couple of days and you'll see that you automatically start waking up at that particular time because yes, it is now programmed into your subconscious mind. Now, if you still have to use that alarm because you have an early flight to the airport and you don't want to take a chance and miss it, at least the setting of your alarm, whether it's your phone or whatever it is, number one, all gadgets should be kept out of your sleeping space. All electronic gadgets should not exist in your sleeping in, in your sleeping place. One is your radiation, two is your Wi-Fi, and three is, white, is the light that it, that it creates. Well, if you are using a particular sound to wake you up, let it be the start of gentle music. And there are certain ringtones which start off with very soft music and, and it slowly gets a little bit louder and louder so you're not getting rudely awakened out of your sleep. You need to understand the transition from sympathetic to parasympathetic should be reserved for only very stressful situations. We should be moved gradually and transition gradually between sympathetic and parasympathetic. So yes, you can do this. The best way is to train yourself. Everything happens, like I said, with commitment, dedication, and discipline. Train your body to wake up at the same time every single day so that you don't have to have the dependency of an alarm waking you up. And like I said, if you do, let it be very gradual. So even when we wake up our children, don't rudely push them and just wake them up. It needs to be gradual because they're into very, very deep sleep and they need to awaken slowly and surely, you know, over time. And that's how we also take care of our heart because any, any, anything that is rudely, rudely shocked in the human body, you know, your body takes time to come back to normalcy. We may adapt to it because you see the thing about human beings, the most common argument is, oh, some people smoke, they never get sick. Some people drink so much, they never get sick. Everyone's different, but you need to understand that the human body, your body is unique and it has a set point. The reason why human beings take their health for granted, when we all know, when we all know the fear of cancer, diabetes, when we all know what we should do to maintain good health, why don't most of us do it? Why don't most of us inspired or motivated? Because we take our health for granted. Why do we take our health for granted? Because most of us wake up the next morning, irrespective of our bad lifestyle, and when this keeps happening, we tend to take that wake up that wake up every morning for granted until something happens. Well, what's happening in your system is you have a set point. Everyone's set point is different. You may be able to push your body over and over again until it hits that set point. And once you cross that set point, there's usually no turning back. For the people who realize this and work within that framework, they're safe. But we should never take our health for granted. And these are little things. Like I always say, align it to nature. This may seem like a very uh, a stupid thing to talk about, but you're not aligned to nature if you need to artificially interrupt your sleep. You should figure out a way where your body can sleep naturally and wake up naturally. Anything artificial doesn't work and give you the same qualities and benefits as quality natural sleep. So you wanna try and make these changes, you wanna try to spread this because there are so many people out there who wake up the wrong way and they have a fluctuation in their sugar levels, they're extremely acidic, they have this complete. So your cortisol, let's get back to this point. You know, one more point. Your cortisol and adrenaline shoots right up because you suddenly move from parasympathetic to sympathetic. And now when, you, when you're finally up and your heart rate comes down and your blood pressure comes down and your cortisol and adrenaline goes right down, because it's rapid, the dip, the crash is also rapid. And that's when you start having cravings for caffeine and something because your energy levels have all of a sudden crashed right now. So you see all of these things, all of these hungers and cravings and erratic, uh, erratic levels in your blood reports are symptoms of your body doing the right thing for you at the right time. 
Now it may be right for your body, it's wrong for us medically because it puts us in a category of disease. So the only one thing that can fix this over and above your medication if you're on it is your own lifestyle and the own lifestyle changes that you choose to make. Have a great day everyone, until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.